Hi there. This is for owners of the Minis Forum MS01. We're going to do a thermal paste replacement. I had someone else ask me about doing this. I've written a small guide to do it before, uh, but figured I would just make a video to make it easier uh, to show you how to do this. Uh, so this is a Minis Forum MS01. Uh, I've modified mine to have a little bit higher feet because I have mine normally in a stack. Uh, but opening up the case, you just push down the button back here, and you slide it out just like that. You can set aside the main case. We've got our M.2 drive slots here on the back underneath this fan shroud. We've got our RAM chips below this fan here. And then you have your PCI bay here, and your CPU is below this. We're going to be replacing the CPU. Uh, I know a lot of people find this a little bit difficult because they see this uh, foam uh, pad and they don't want to remove it. Uh, you don't have to, and we're going to go over that. Uh, so first we need a small screwdriver. I have an iFixit kit here. If you have small bits, you can do this with whatever bits you have. Uh, first part is to remove the three screws on the fan. I set those there just so I can keep them separated and they don't get lost because they are small. And you can disconnect the fan header from the board, just a small pull, and it'll come right up. And then the fan itself will just pop right up and off. I'm going to set that over here. Now, what you'll notice when you're looking for replacing the CPU uh, heatsink uh, in terms of just getting to it for thermal paste is you can only see two screws, but you know that it's held down by more than two screws. Uh, the way that you can check for where those are located are twofold. You can look at the back, and you can see where the mounting bracket has them. Adjust that for light there. So you can see where the mounting brackets are for the screws. Uh, the other way is through feeling on top. So if you put your finger over here, you can feel where the holes are. And they should line up where these are. Uh, and then all you really need to do is just poke the screwdriver through that small hole. It's just a little poke. You'll feel the screw just like that. And then you can start loosening it. and then you can loosen the other ones. This is what I get for doing it at an angle visually for me to make sure that you can see it. Uh, and this is my second unit. I've not opened this unit yet, so we're gonna see what condition uh, the thermal paste is in. My first unit, was very dried out and excessive uh, amount of paste. Uh, so I had to clean it all up. I'm expecting the same here because I was getting similar temperatures here on this unit. Uh, but I'll just feel where that hole is. And just poke through. And then find the screw head. And you'll find the screw head because the screw driver will lock in just like that. And then just loosen. Okay. And you'll see that the screw holes that are left are quite small. And then you just lift. Uh, there is a slight chance that it may stick on one of the screw holes. So you may have to loosen the screw again, just slightly. Like that. And there we go. And so this way you can see the screw holes that are left behind. And that's all you have. So you don't have to tear off all of that material. The screws are locked in. Uh, you can see here there's actually quite a lot of thermal paste here. Uh, a very excessive amount. So I have two different things I'm going to use here. Uh, you don't have to use a large thermal paste. You can use whatever thermal paste works for you. Uh, but I do recommend using an alcohol wipe pad uh, to clean it off after you do the initial cleaning. Uh, and then I have Noctua NTH2, 
I have a large 10 gram thermal paste uh, tube because I didn't want to buy it anymore. Uh, so I bought one and I've had it for almost forever. But I use a small piece of tissue paper to do the initial removal of thermal paste. You can just bundle that up into a small square and you can just go over that initial amount and it'll pull a lot of it up. And then all you have to do is clean up in the gaps, if there are any gaps, or over the other edges. And so that is quite clean. I'm going to throw this in my trash can. And now on the CPU heatsink side, we're going to do the same thing. the wheel in my chair. So we're just gonna slide it off, get a bit more along the edge there, and just try to make sure we don't have all this excessive paste on here. In this kit, it actually comes with not just the thermal paste, but also the wipes, which is why I liked this kit so much, because it gives you a lot of them. So you got your tube of paste. You have my cat, who's now ventured in to say he's hungry. And below that tube of paste, you have instructions for how to use it, how to do the dot patterns. And below that, you have a whole pack of wipes. A whole bunch of them. Not in camera feed there. Yeah. So I'm just going to pull one of these out, put all the rest back in, and we're going to use it. These are pre moistened towelettes with alcohol. Uh, you don't want to like squeeze it dry, you want it to be slightly damp. And then you just go over the CPU with it. And if it got a little over onto the green area of the chip, that's okay. It's alcohol, it will dry off. And then you do the same on the heatsink. You're going to go over the base that touches it and then right around the edges because you don't want anything coming up off the edge to create a gap. Uh, gaps are bad. Any air gap that gets stuck between the thermal paste will just give you excessive heat because you have a air doesn't transfer heat as well as direct contact or thermal. Uh, so we're gonna let that dry real quick. The amount that you need to put on is actually quite small, much less than they put on uh, from the factory. I'm just gonna dab this dry. I see a couple of little drops that are not fully gone yet. And so you'll apply a little bit of pressure and you're going to apply some to this chipset on the side here, just a little. And then just a dab as well right across the larger chip itself. Just like that. Not a lot. Then you can just pull back on the tube. It'll pull back that excess inside it. Not a lot. I just pulled very lightly. And just cap it right off again. And then you're ready for the next time. So with that done, we'll take a look at this. This is dry now. No water reflecting off of it. So we're going to reinstall it. Reinstall. It's just reverse of the installation. Just slide it back in to the corner over here. Let the chipset collide. You don't want to lift it again. Once you've made contact, leave it down uh, because if you lift it again, you're potentially creating another air gap. And then you just find the screws and screw them back down a little each corner at a time. Uh, you do them a little at each time so you get an even spread of the thermal paste. 
You don't want it to all spread out to one side because it was uneven. And then you just go until you feel that it's hand tight. Uh, you can go slightly tighter, but hand tight is good enough. These have springs uh, to keep them from being too tight and to help it actually push down pressure. So hand tight is all you need. Reapply the fan right over those same three holes. Again, working with the small screws, just be careful that you don't drop them because they're hard to find. Also hard to put on to the screwdriver head if it's magnetic because it likes to move around. Uh, but it's useful when they're magnetic because once you have it on there, uh, it makes it much easier to put it on the screw hole. And then just reconnect your fan header. And that's all there is to it. You can just put all your tools away, uh, box your case back up, plug it back in, and check your fan temps. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have further questions about the MS01, um, just let me know in the comments.